Hi, I wanted to show you how you can use a bitmap editor like Photoshop, or in my case, PhotoP, to create a vector graphic that is really, really flexible and looks great. And here's the step by step on doing it for beginners. Um, first off, I'm going to teach a, a method by using a reference graphic, grabbing a graphic that you want to try to recreate. And this is a pretty good one to start with. So I'm just going to simply copy this image and go back. And I'm going to, well, here's my final version where I'm going to get it to. The original looked like this, and to it I just built up three objects, a circle, a crest, and a star, to try to recreate it. But I'm going to start from scratch, so I'm going to go File, and New, and the size of the graphic I'm going to create to get started is going to be 300 by 300 pixels. I'll just hit Create. And because I've already copied the graphic, I should be able to just paste it in and move it roughly where I want it to be. And this is what I'm going to call a reference layer, so I'm going to call it Ref, and name it right over there. I'll, sorry, I'll make this a little bit bigger too. Now, to get started with this, now that it's there, I'm going to lock that reference layer so I can't disturb it. And I'm going to start using rulers and guidelines. So my rulers are showing right now. The default is that they're probably off. So go to View, go to Rulers, turn them on. Guidelines can be pulled out of them by actually clicking on the ruler itself and dragging it to where some outside edges might be. And in this case, I'm going to go to the outside of the circle, the top of the circle, or roughly where it is, and the bottom of the circle. I'm also going to grab one from the top and I'm going to try to put it at the midpoint of that star, both horizontally and vertically. And these guidelines are going to give me more references to try to make this a little more accurate as well. So now let's get started turning this thing into a vector. I'm going to start by making a new layer and then I'm going to choose the appropriate tool. And an appropriate tool for vectors are the shape tools down below. And you can click on the usually defaults to the rectangle, but I'm using the ellipse. And with regard to the ellipse, you have some choices and options up at the top. First of all, I've got something that's a, a fill, and usually it defaults to something that's a solid color like this, but you can choose any color you like, and in this case I want to make that circle so that it is about that color of blue. I'll use that. And the stroke is going to be black. You have a choice of no stroke, black, gradient, or pattern for either of these color pickers. I'm going with black. I don't think you want to draw with no, no uh, path showing up. Just like that. And you also have a line width. In this case, I'm going to draw a line width that's about, you know, 2.7. That's fine. I'm just approximating it. You also have some line qualities up here. And in this point in time, it usually defaults to center. So I'm going to default it like that so it behaves the same way it will for you the first time. And now to make that circle, the easy thing is use the guidelines. Oh, if those guidelines aren't showing up for you, make sure you go show your guides. And it's a good idea to have it snap to the guides as well, down under your window, under your uh, options, your drop-down options. So now I'm going to draw that thing, and it should snap pretty close to those guidelines for me to give me the circle just about the right size that I want. Now the beautiful thing about vectors is after you draw them, it gives you the stroke, that's the line around the outside, and the fill on the inside, and you can change it anytime you want. So I can make this thing thicker, like that. Now you might notice, I'll turn off the eyeball, the stroke should be on the inside of the path, well, there's an option for that too. So I'm going to position this so the stroke goes on the inside. And I can compare it to the original and say, yeah, it's close enough for what I'm doing right now. Hope you get the idea. And that blue happens to match exactly because I think I was using that blue before. But you can actually pick the color straight off your bitmap. Now that this is done, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Circle. And I'm going to add another layer. Let's go on and create the crest. The crest shape is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to not use a primitive shape like this. I'm going to use the pen tool, and the pen tool is incredibly powerful when you get to know it. A little frustrating if you don't. The pen tool also has an option of free pen, but I'm going with the standard. So the way the pen tool works is you can... It's also going to draw with that same fill color, and you can see this could get a little, uh, little frustrating later on. And I may want to change that, but I'll give it a try just out of the gate. You click an anchor point, and then you click other anchor points where you want them to be. And you'll notice, oh, I've got a point there. I need to have a point up here. It's kind of like we're drawing with an elastic band. And I'm going to click just on the outside. And notice it's drawing with that same fill and that same stroke. And this is going to be OK. I can close this thing up and get roughly the shape. The beautiful thing about vectors is the shape is not going to look exactly like you want it to begin with. But now you can start modifying the shape. So with that crest shape, I'm now going to go on over, and under the pen tool are the selection tools for the pen tool, or for vectors. And I'm going to choose Direct Select. Direct Select lets me start manipulating the anchor points. So if I didn't get it exactly where it should be, I can move it. By the way, it is really important that this path closes 
and stops where it actually started. So this is one solid path. Now, to start manipulating it, this is where it gets a little tricky is I, I'd like to see this with a little more control when I move this around. So I'm going to actually change the qualities of this right now. I'm going to give it no fill and I'm going to give it a red stroke and I'm going to make that red stroke super thin so that I can actually see what it is I'm messing around with. So I can actually see the path a little bit better. And the default color of this path happens to be blue at this point. So now to start manipulating this, here's the beautiful thing about vectors too. Double click an anchor point and you can switch something from being a sharp angle to a curve. And curves, you can see how they twist around with these little handles out here. This is called a tangent. I call this a tangent handler. So our, our tangent handle. And in this case, I'm going to bend these handles around so that I can get it to follow certain curves. Now, before I get rid of this thing, it's going to send a handle right off the screen. So I don't need this one. I'm going to double click the handle. It goes away. And now I'm only dealing with one handle at a time. And just by playing with this and bending it around, you get an instinct to this eventually. I can get this thing to follow the outside path of that original reference stroke really easily. I'm going to go down to the next one. Looks like that next point is actually right off the screen, so I'm going to move it down a little bit like this. And I'm going to double click, create another tangent handler. I'm going to double click this side to get rid of it, and this snaps back to where it should go. And now I can just manipulate this one and get it to bend and follow the path. Now I'm doing this pretty quick, but once you start playing around with this, you should get the idea. And you should be able to do a pretty accurate job of following this path from this reference. It looks like it was created using a vector tool. Oops. There we go. And I'm bending the last path so it matches. Just like that. Good. Now, once I've got the path where I want it to be, I can go back and start restoring these things. So I'm going to go back to the fill and I will go solid and I will choose gray. I'll go back to the path and I will choose black. And I will make this thing as thick as it should be. And it remembers the last option that I had, so it's filling it in from the inside, or it's filling the inside of the path. So this is looking pretty much like I want it to. Now I have myself a crest. Last stage, I'm going to turn off the visibility so I can see the last thing, make a new layer, and make the star. And you're getting the idea with the pen tool. The pen tool is probably the fastest thing you can manipulate. Um, once again, because these are fine points, I think I'm going to turn off that fill. If you don't, you'll find out the hard way why it's really advantageous to do this. And I'm going to make this nice and small so I can actually see the path. And click the points that I need to, to try to create this star. So for a simple logo like this, this is doing the job. The other thing I like about vectors is you can go back and refine them later. I can zoom in on this. Oh wow, I can go right to pixels if I want to. And using that direct select tool, I can manipulate this. I can use the arrow keys to move this thing around to get it as accurate as I want. And of course, it's got a resolution of whatever the pixel resolution is, so you can't go beyond that. Now, this is interesting because I can see a little twisty thing going on there. So I can see this actually has handles. If I double click it again, no, it doesn't seem to get rid of those twisty handles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click those handles to get rid of them and turn this back into a sharp angle. And, you know, I'm working a little harder than I need to, obviously, at this resolution. You know, I'm close enough to what I need. I'm going to step back, see what it looks like there. And now I'm going to fill in that path with a solid color and black. And by the way, you have other options in here. We're going to explore those in a second. Here's the other thing that we have, the stroke. Well, you know what? This is all filled in with black on the inside. We don't need a stroke. And if you don't need one, turn it off. Just simplifies things for you. So at this point in time, if I'm not mistaken, oh, that's interesting. I don't have a fill on the star yet, so I've got to go back up to the fill, solid, black, now i got it. Not sure where I went wrong there. So there was my original. There is the recreation that I made, the original and the recreation. And that's pretty close. I mean, there are some differences. There's some lovely tapered lines and things like that, but we'll get into that in another exercise. So that's how you can use vectors to recreate logos, and I hope that was enough to get you started. For those people who are ready to enhance it, look for the next lesson. I'll show you how you can enhance this and make it look better than the original. Okay, give good luck. Give it a try yourself.